Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peter McKay. Uh, oh, I work sorry. at. <laughs> yeah, you did well. I've heard, I've heard a lot worse than you said. Um, I work for uh, Data Management, National Records Historic Environment within Historic Environment Scotland. And this is a joint paper which is based on a project that I did with Kerry Binding, who works in the Hypermedia Research Group at the University of South Wales. He's a, he's a data scientist. And we're, we're looking at uh, defining period terminologies. And this has got some relevance to how we index things in our research frameworks. So I'm going to skip over on the, the technical side, that carries expertise. Uh, we've already seen this morning that uh, the archaeology doesn't have boundaries. Uh, this is a map of the, uh, I think it's the relaunched um, uh, routes to Compostela, the, 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 the Camino, uh, which is just to make the point that pilgrimage crosses lots of boundaries. And there's a common theme amongst pilgrimage at, a, at an international scale, but each country has got their own responsibilities as well. And it's also medieval archaeology and contemporary archaeology. Uh, and in the Scottish context, we have pilgrimage. Uh, we've got people who go on pilgrimage, people who come back from pilgrimage, pilgrimage and bring back objects. So on the left is a scallop shell uh, shaped badge, which is a uh, symbol of somebody who's been to Santiago de Compostela. And on the right, the St. Thomas Beckett pilgrimage ample, uh, again, which has got a, a reference <coughs> to Canterbury and pilgrimage in England. And the SCARF National Framework, the Scottish National Framework, identifies pilgrimages as important, uh, these badges as important as they shed light on religion and belief and practice in the medieval period. So they've both, got both a local interest, but also there's an international context that they're going to be viewed in. Uh, we've already had conversations about the castles this morning, it's the same idea that. There are things that run across uh, frameworks, whether it be regional or national or international. Uh, so turning to the Scottish situation, uh, several years ago SCARF was launched uh, as a national framework, Scottish Archaeological Research Framework, and uh, currently there's a bit, bit, bit of, uh, much more uh, development of re regional research frameworks. Um, this is just a very schematic diagram that I put together, may, may, may have missed some, and, uh, uh, I'll make, I'll make some ideas as some of the, the research things are going on. Uh, the ones on the uh, right hand side of the screen as you look at it are, are the ones that are funded through or organised through the SCARF programme. So we've got the completed national framework, there's a, a completed regional framework for Argyll, Rafa, and there's ongoing work in South East Scotland which is a, a year old now, a year and a half old probably. And then new, new framework starting off in Highland which we heard this morning was being driven by a community group, so they're leading that group. Uh, the Three Islands Research Framework, which we'll hear about later, is universities and Perth and Kinross is through, through their council, uh, well, through a heritage trust. And there may be more coming along. Uh, more, there's more interest in sort of the west of Scotland things, possibly in the future. But there are also SCARF frameworks, the, the red ones on the, on the left, as you look at it. The carved stones, marine and maritime and science, these are much more thematic frameworks, but they also cross back the science and forms the, um, the, the, the regional frameworks and the national framework. We've heard about DNA and beakers this morning. Well, that's the science, and they, they, they cross cut, so we shouldn't be thinking of them in the, in the boxes that I've got to do next year. We also have a World Heritage Site Heart of Orkney research framework, which is organised outside of the, the SCARF environment. Uh, so, Back in August, the Three Islands Research Framework was launched. It's a Twitter, a Twitter uh, announcement on Twitter, to which one of the responses, uh, this one, which is that I mentioned the Argyll Framework, says, so how does Argyll and Butte feed into the, um, uh, the, 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 the Three Islands Framework? So already, as soon as the, 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 the regional framework was announced, somebody's thinking, how does it relate to other existing frameworks? So that's what I'm going to try and talk about this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, so, taking that viewpoint, as, as a researcher, I want to find out our, th our current thinking about questions about, say, Neolithic burial practices in Northern Scotland. Their, their research area is not the same as the, the research areas that we necessarily have organised regional frameworks into. So they need to look at Argyll, possibly, Highland, and the, the Three Islands groups, and they need to look at research questions related to burial practices. They may also want to... See how it changed over time. So, what happens? What, how does how, how does burial practice change through time? So, one of the things that I've been looking at, but Kerry, was how do we define time? We 
we all know the nail, the, the bronze age, the iron age, but we haven't really defined them in a, in a, on a, a online refer referenceable situation. So, so, so the, the scaffold project Scotland's ages, uh, archaeological periods and ages project was supposed to set up uh, a reference vocabulary for, 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 for use in uh, machine readable formats and uh, on the internet. And again, we also want to look at it, how does how do the regional questions relate to the national framework, to the SCAR framework. And finally, we want to look at outside Scotland. So looking at the, the west coast of Scotland, there's a, a common sea between that Northern Ireland and uh, Argyll. So, so there's, there's the, the seaways of uh, uh, the communications routes. There's a lot of uh, potential um, similarities there. We also, we've talked about Southeast like Scotland and Northeast England. We've got an artificial border on the Cheviot Hills. How do these, how do the frameworks tie across? So we're thinking about using the, making sure that we're all trying to, we're trying to define the terminology we use so that we're all talk, talking about the same thing, think we're talking about the same thing. Uh, so why use control of vocabularies? It's to improve consistency in what we call things, to improve cross searching online uh, between, different, between the regional frameworks and within the national framework and across other frameworks, whether it's the national boundaries or other thematic frameworks, or specialist frameworks that have developed, as I say, for carved stones. There's a lot of research for carved stones that will relate to an early medieval framework. We need to make, we also need to move to a more sustainable model for, for, for um, maintaining and updating the research frameworks. There's a lot of effort and emphasis goes on to, into creating the, the framework, but once that framework, once that activity has happened, how, how is the information maintained? How do we know, how do we measure we're meeting the, uh, the questions that have been asked? Uh, so that's where we want to use the terminology and the, the technology to help feed information back into the research frameworks. Uh, as I say, we, we, uh, I work in the National Historic Environment. We use controlled vocabularies to, to, to manage some of the searches in our systems as Historic England and uh, the Welsh Royal Commission. Uh, several years ago, we worked with the, the Hypermedia Research Unit at the University of South Wales to create a, a linked data semant semantic web uh, version of our monument, the Sora, <laughs> and uh, objects and maritime craft. But Scotland was lacking a, a, a period list that we could refer to. So over the last winter, we, 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 we compiled and analysed how people are using periods and uh, created a linked data form. So this, this screen shows the heritage data site, heritagedata.org. Uh, it, 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 it's uh, in a machine readable format, so it can be taken, used, built into widgets, and help other people search. Key thing is it, it defines a, a term. It allows, allows us to express the term in both English and in Gaelic. And so uh, whether it's a, it's a a narrower term, for the term, it's a more precise medium for the term, or there, in this case, yeah, there's there's alternative labels how other uh, people might refer to the thing, to the, the, the monument types. So as long as we can map the terms to, to an index, it should improve uh, the searchability. And key to this is they will have a little scope that describes what the term is. Uh, they've been restricted to 154 characters, which is quite limiting, we discovered, for the period terms. So a period project we're going to expand that period. Uh, looking at the work Kerry did, uh, he 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 did a lot of other research on on the, the use of chronolo uh, on chronology and periodization and how people describe the vocabularies people use to describe uh, periods. So he's got the. Uh, it's identified that the, the, the three age system that we use, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age type system, cultural terms, Roman, Pictish, Viking, Saxon, the regnal periods, the kings, queens of uh, England, Scotland, and uh, ordinal centuries, just the, 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 the centuries, as well as things like the First World War. And then we've got various monument types in Scotland. We've, we've got a lot of monuments up that we, we don't really know the terms, so we've got quite a broad term, so they would might say it's an unknown, uh, the date's unknown, or, or somebody has to consider the dates we say it's unassigned. <coughs> and then there are other terms we use, industrial, improvement, crofting. These are all terms that people vaguely use to describe uh, a period. And many people can have different ways of expressing that period. So Bronze Age can be expressed by Portable Antiquity Scheme, by Historic England Heritage Data, 
and on their arena portal as well. As. And regionally, uh, date range has changed. This is the, the graph on the bottom shows how the, the, the time ranges. People in different parts of Scotland have defined the Bronze Age. And some of them recognise a Calcolithic, which is much more an artifact based uh, term rather than a mon monument, uh, used for monuments. Uh, so some people won't, won't recognise the Calcolithic, others will. We, we, we're not trying to say everybody must say that the Bronze Age starts and ends at such and such a date. We recognise this fluidity and we recognise that there's a need for regionality. And this is one of Kerry's slides showing that there's no hard, it's trying to convince, uh, convey that there's no hard start and end period. These edges are fuzzy. Uh, and it's not, a new, it's not a new problem, it's a chart from 1769 which shows the issue going back as far as then, so people recognise that there's lots of different overlaps. Yes. We haven't published the date ranges for the regional <coughs> terms yet. We're waiting for, uh, we've got a project, we've put out a call on Twitter and uh, on the SCARF website for people to help refine the scope notes that we use to define the periods. Once that's done, once hopefully we get some feedback, I haven't had any yet, but uh, a month left, um, we'll then update the, the, the heritage data site, get the, get the scope notes translated into Gaelic and uh, then publish it on our website called Perio, Perio do, do, do. And Again, it's just another graph showing how we compare the regional, the regional period dates. And the idea is, yeah, we'll publish these as, uh, on, on the heritage data website. So work to get do, we, want, we need to update the scope notes. Uh, Add Gallic term, terms and um, uh, the, the translate the, the scope notes into Gallic. Uh, combine the Scots data with the Perio.deal data website and then up, update the heritage data website as well. And as he says, he wants to update, uh, submit a patch for inclusion on, onto the Perio site so that it becomes a canonic, canonical reference data set. Um, we also want to share information, so we want to work with colleagues in England to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. That's me, I think. <laughs>